wanted to get into another project with you. And I wanted to try the sheet load of cards that Crafty Al puts out once a month. And I really liked uh, this month's design because it's basically a split panel uh, top folding A2. So it looks pretty neat. And I thought it would be a great way to showcase the, this Reindeer Games paper palette because I really like the three white patterns that are in here. Uh, these are double-sided, so... Uh, but this is... I really like this candy one in particular. Anyway. So, that was my plan for the pattern paper. For the actual card bases, I thought we would use some craft because I've been... I don't know, I think the holiday season is just a great time to use craft card stock. And then for the focal point, I wanted to really use a matching stamp set with this, but I thought, you know, it would be great to do use the sentiment one because often they're sort of underrepresented. And this one comes with a bunch of cute snowflakes, so I think that you could do that with, like, Be Merry or one of these other sentiments and uh, basically put that in a two and a half inch square. And I did pull a little ink so that we can do a little ink blending along the side just to sort of, you know, add a little more interest so that it doesn't look like just a square, essentially. Um, so that's what we're going to be up to. The original cutting guide for this, if I can have it right way up, um, is based around 12 by 12 pattern paper. So because this is 6x6, six six, we're going to get slightly less cards. The If you do it out of 12x12, 12 12, you'll get 18 cards. But if you're using 6x6 six six sheets, you're only going to get a dozen. I think I will do 6, which would be using two pieces of pattern paper from each. So if you want to, from each pattern. Um, so if you want to do that, you'd basically do either, you'd cut it at 4 inches, um, and all the... Most of the patterns I'm using today have like a up, like a are directional, and that they have like a right way up. So basically, you'd want to cut it four inches, and then either cut three of the A pieces, sorry, or cut either two of the A pieces or two of the C pieces. The uh, C pieces are two and a half inches, so that'll be almost the entire width of the six by six. And then with the two inches left uh, on the side, you would then cut your B pieces out. So basically, we're going to do that for each of these patterns. So there's going to be a good bit of cutting involved in this. And I have never really done mass production, and that's kind of what these sheet loads are set up for. So I think that'll be just an interesting thing to sort of get my head around. Because it reminds me of, like, making Christmas ornaments for, like, crafters and stuff with my grandpa mother because you know that was sort of a you do it once but then you know it it's relatively relaxing because you're not figuring out each and every one but I thought you might not want to look at me cutting paper for a bit so I talked to my cat and borrowed his magic wand and we will see if we can't summon a little crafting magic to make this happen a little bit faster that was quick um so let me just explain how these go together, and then we'll kind of look at the full set once they're done. I didn't mention it before, but when I'm dealing with uh, craft cardstock, I do like to cut like just a white panel to use as sort of an insert so it's easier to write on. Because I find that like the craft can be, even with like a black pen, it's still kind of tricky to figure out. Um, so let me show you how this will go together. So this is sort of your split panel. Then you'll take the other, and there'll be a pattern paper here. And then you will take a sentiment and it just goes like this. And you still have this open area where you can see underneath. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. So let's start by, whoops, getting that out of the way. And so for the top, you just grab a piece of pattern paper. And you can, I mean, the original card sketch suggests that you use um, 
different pattern papers rather than having it all be holly everywhere. But you could certainly do that if you preferred. And because this is double-sided, you can also kind of uh, turn over the pattern paper a little bit. And this, this card base is a little strange. But it's fine. Um, we aren't going for perfection. We're going for fun. So I am going to just tape up this guy. Sort of center it. That one didn't quite work. Let's see if we can't just readjust that a little bit. There we go. That's better. The one thing about this tape, as you can see, this this card base got a little cut unevenly on the side, but. Uh, I don't think it really is going to be a big deal one way or the other. So then I'm going to grab one of these guys, and this actually might be what this piece is. Let me just do a comparison to... These are very close in size. Just As you can see, it's just sort of like this one's only just a quarter inch bigger than the other one. Anyway, so this is... That's that piece. So I will grab, I think I'll do hats here. And then we'll just do the same thing and At this point, there's not really a top or a bottom to it, but this piece is going to be candy cane. I misspoke a little earlier, because um, most of these patterns aren't super... Uh, with the exception of the hats, I don't think they're as uh, obviously upright or not. I mean, I think with uh, with both the holly and these guys, like if it was upside down, I mean, I think candy canes right side up makes more sense, but that's just me. And then the slightly tricky part is you, something like a scoreboard is going to help line these guys up because basically what you want to do is put some tape on the back of this and adhere it. And I'm going to sort of leave the center piece open just because I don't want the, uh, I don't want this to stick. And this aligns all the way over and it's mostly on the uh, bottom piece here. But the, a scoreboard helps sort of keep this all together. And then once it's pushed, I mean, once it's down, it's pretty much down. So, there you go. It's basically what that looks like. And rub off any tape you might have. And then you just grab your sentiments, and you can kind of see that that sort of goes down here. Um, actually, there's a gap here. So, th this one's a little bit different than normal. But, um, basically, you want your sentiment to go here. So it's slightly off center, but kind of centered between these two pieces, I would say. And I did use glue on this whole thing, so I'm actually going to put it more... Well, it will. I may have to back it a little bit so it doesn't stick to the card itself because it is a little sticky on the back, but I might be able to just rub it off. Yeah, I can. 
So I just rubbed the tape off so that it's uh, not going to stick to the card. So that's basically what they look like. Um, I'm going to fold this down and grab one of my... This is just plain white cardstock. I think I actually got this off of Amazon because they're pre-cut uh, 6x4 sheets. So most of the time when I'm doing an A2, all I really need to do is cut it down from, uh, whoopsies, you know, just cut it down in one direction. And there we go. And that's what the finished piece looks like. And then you can write whatever you want to on the inside. So once the full set is done, I will show you what they look like. Let us call once again on our crafting magic and go. And here's the final set. Thanks for watching. And if you have any more questions or other things you want to see, just let me know.